uh, Senator Harris, uh, I would say good morning. It's obviously not a good morning. Um, yeah. What is your reaction yeah. to the, the mass shootings in El Paso yesterday, and then you wake up to find out what happened in Dayton, Ohio, earlier today? Well, that's exactly it. We went to sleep just mourning the tragedy of it. And, um, and frankly, really, it's, it's a combination of feelings, um, none of which, of course, match the feelings of the families of those victims. But the, the sadness, the frustration, and frankly, the anger, Jake, um, because we can do something about this. And, and so you put that fact, right, that we actually can do something, and you combine that with the fact that our children are right now living in fear, like seriously living in fear. Our children are going to school every day, elementary, middle, high school students, having to have a drill where they are taught about how they have to crouch in a corner or hide in a closet in the event that there is a mass shooter roaming the hallways of their school. If you talk to our children, they will tell you they are afraid to go to school. They sit in a classroom and they should be paying attention to a teacher and learning the wonders of math or science or music. But half their brain is aware that somebody might walk through that back door carrying an assault weapon. It, it, so it's just, it, it's tragic on so many levels, but the frustration that I feel comes from knowing that there actually is action we can take. Well, that what is that will action? Have an impact on this. L l let's talk about that, that cuz you've laid yeah, out a number of executive executive that. orders and executive actions that right. you would take as president. Yes, I have. And what are they? Well, but let me tell you why. Because we don't lack for good ideas. There are all kinds of good ideas. I've had some plenty of my friends and colleagues who are running for president have some great ideas. I'm supporting them. We don't lack for good ideas. We lack for action. So, yes, when elected, I am prepared to take executive action if Congress doesn't pull its act together. I will give, after being elected, the United States Congress 100 days to pull it together, put a bill on my desk for signature, and if they do not, I will take executive action and do three things in particular. I'll put in place a comprehensive background check. Why? Because it's just logical that you might want to know before someone can buy a lethal weapon if they've been found by a court to be a danger to themselves or others. You might just want to know before somebody can buy a gun if they have been found by a court to be guilty of committing a violent crime. So, background checks. I'm going to require that we put resources into ATF so they can take the licenses of gun dealers who break the law. Do you know that up to 90% of the guns associated with crime are sold by just 5% of the gun dealers? We need to take their licenses. And then the third piece is by executive action, I'll put in place a ban on the importation of assault weapons into our country. Because we got to get this under control. And again, it's within our ability to act. And I know there been, there's been a lot of conversation this morning about many things, but you know, the, the reality is that we, we are not without hope on this issue. We're without action. And you know, p leaders got to lead. And in particular, when our babies, when our children are living in fear, and they are. So law enforcement officials are investigating um, this document, this screed that they believe was written yeah. by the suspected terrorist who, who conducted the El Paso massacre. It's filled with white nationalist, white supremacist, racist hatred towards immigrants, specifically towards Hispanics. Yeah. You're a former yeah. prosecutor. Um, was this a hate crime? Was this an act of domestic terrorism, assuming that the document is right? What, what's your take on the legality of it? Based on everything I know, yes, and yes, and yes. Hate crime and act of domestic terrorism. And on that point, you know, and here, I'm in Las Vegas, as you mentioned. Um, I did a big rally last night. You know, Las Vegas experienced, you know, one October, which was the deadliest mass shooting in recent history. A couple days before I was in Colorado, and of course, Columbine happened there. And then in, in my home state of, of, of California, Gilroy. And, and so let's talk about it. When we're talking about domestic terrorism, um, we also have to recognize that under this administration, they have not been putting the resources into investigating and dealing with these cases as they are, what they are, which is, to your point, domestic terrorism. And so there also has to be 
some accountability by this administration to take these cases seriously and call them what they are. And this is where we also have to acknowledge that we have a president of the United States who uses the microphone, which is probably one of the most powerful tools in the hand of the president of the United States, and uses that microphone in a way that is about sowing hate and division in our country, in a way that is about not acknowledging domestic terrorism when it occurs, and in a way that is highly irresponsible and not a reflection of the values and the morals of who we are as the American people. President Trump condemned the shooting in El Paso as a, quote, hateful act and an act of cowardice. Um, your 2020 opponent, Congressman Beto O'Rourke, told me this morning uh, he believes President Trump is not only encouraging racist rhetoric or, or engaging in racist rhetoric, but is also responsible for racist violence because he is creating this atmosphere. Do you agree? What role, if any, do you see uh, the president playing when it comes to this? Obviously, the shooter is responsible for the shooting, but in terms of the environment right. of hatred, right. what's your view of that? Yeah. Well, my view is, is, is pretty simple and direct, which is there is a consequence to the words that the President of the United States speaks. And when she uses the microphone in a way that is about elevating public discourse and speaking to our better selves and our higher angels, there will be a consequence for that as well. We have a current President of the United States who does not understand the responsibility that comes with the office, which is to be a leader on every level, including encouraging, challenging us to be our best selves. Instead, we have an occupant of the White House in Donald Trump who completely and continuously goes to the lowest common denominator. So yes, I do believe there is consequence to his words. Your fellow senator and 2020 opponent, Cory Booker, said he was frustrated that some of his fellow candidates do not support his plans for gun licensing, gun licensing pardon me, and he's calling on his opponents to support it. You said uh, you agree with lots of your uh, competitors' ideas. Is that one of them? Do you support federal gun licensing? Uh, yeah, I think it's a great idea. I think it's a great idea. But you again, Jake, my issue is, I, I do, I think it's a great idea. There are a lot of great ideas. And, and, and this is not about Corey. It's about the, just the fact of it. We have not lacked for great ideas. This has been going on for far too long. You can go back to the reason that we had the Brady Bill. You can go back to President Reagan being shot. You can go back to, you know, in my backyard in San Francisco, 101, California. We are not lacking for good ideas. We are lacking for Congress to have the courage to act. And listen, and I, I want to say something else that I think is really, really important to also acknowledge and recognize. Those children who are having those drills, are not registered with any political party and could give a you-know-what about what party you or I are registered with to vote. They are scared. Those victims of these crimes, their families will mourn them not through the identity of the party with which they were registered to vote. This is ridiculous that Congress has simply not had the courage to stand up and have the spine to say, hey, it's a false choice to say you're either in favor of the Second Amendment or you want to take everyone's guns away. That's a false choice. Have the courage to say, hey, fine if you all want to go hunting, but we need reasonable gun safety laws in our country, including universal background checks, including a renewal of the assault weapons ban. Assault weapons were designed to kill a lot of people quickly. There is no reason for them to be available on the streets of a civil society. Senator Kamala Harris, Democrat of California and a presidential candidate uh, coming to us from Las Vegas, Nevada this morning. Thank you so much. Thanks, Jack.